Hello everybody, this is Omkar from Beehive and today we bring to you a brand new episode of our Unlearn HR series. Today we have with us Mr. Sunil Deshmukh who's going to enlighten us about one of the most critical members of our corporate family, a mentor. A lot of us have been blessed by having a mentor at the workplace. A lot of us have missed out on the feeling of having a mentor at the workplace. Uh, having observed in the corporate environment, we've realized that mentor mentee networks are more of a checkbox item and very few times thought to action is actually implemented. So at Beehive, we were thinking about whom actually we should invite in order to evangelize, enlighten us on the thought of how can we start finding a mentor at the workplace. And uh, I am very, very fortunate that uh, my path crossed with uh, Mr. Sunil Deshmukh's path and uh, very, very delighted to introduce him. He's a global business leader with more than three decades of experience. He's currently the global board of director of Institute of Management Accountants USA. He's also the associate dean of IMA's mentoring committee and also membership member of an IMA's leadership academy, strategic planning committee, and also the nominations committee. He was also uh, the recipient of IMA's champion award, which is at a global scale in 2020 and probably the first Indian to achieve so. Previously, in his illustrious career as a corporate honcho, he served as the CEO of Infrastructure Group and New Business Initiatives at the AM International Holdings in Singapore. He was also the managing director of Wilson Cables Private Limited and also at the board of Chicagen and Cycal Logistics. Uh, previously, um, uh, Sunil Deshmukh has held leadership positions with leading global entities such as the Indo Jordan Chemicals, McDonald's, Foster's, India, amongst others. He's worked in a range of consumer services, including Africa, Asia, Middle East. Talking about his qualifications, he is a qualified management consultant with certifications from the United States and India. He's a fellow member of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, FCS, and also the alumni of Oxford Business School and associate certified coach by ICF. He's completed a range of uh, certifications in advanced management and leadership program from said business school. He's also very interestingly, a mentor to uh, Atal Incubation Center, Ramba Malge Prabodini, which incidentally also is the incubation center of Beehive. Alongside that, he's worked with Magic uh, uh, Aurangabad and helps various mentor roles across a lot of startup promoting organizations across the country. So that was one of the most illustrious uh, introduction what I have given in this Unlearn HR series and no better person to have Mr. Sunil Deshmukh to, to join us for, for talking about such an important topic. So, so welcome Mr. Sunil Deshmukh to this, to this podcast you. and this interview. Thank you very much Omkara and I'm very, <clears throat> I'm a bit concerned you use the word enlightenment. So it's a very strong word. I don't know what enlightenment I'm going to give it to you, but let's try. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest source of enlightenment is people with experience and one will, uh, one has to be really, really foolish not to know that three decades of experience can, can lead to, lead to enlightenment. So I am, I'm very, very confident. So, you know, just to get things rolling <clears throat> right off the yep. bat, um, uh, mentorship or mentoring as a concept is, is been flourishing, uh, in the corporate workplace since time immemorial, right? Right from the Rajas and the monarchies to modern Indian workplace, mentors have played a significant role in, in development of the organization by developing youngsters. I want to know from you as, as a first-hand uh, experience that not Mr. Sunil Deshmukh, the leader right now, but Mr. Sunil Deshmukh, the young aspirational Indian who entered the corporate Indian workforce, uh, how were you mentored? in your early days and how did that actually help you uh, evolve into the person you have? Yeah, thanks, thanks. A very interesting question. And I was just thinking back, uh, be, becoming a bit, bit nostalgic. So I, I have many mentors, still have many mentors who still mentor me, but I will tell you two or three instances when I started a formal way of mentoring. So in 1997, eight, I used to work for an Australian beer company based in Mumbai as a CFO and company secretary. And I used to attend the board meetings. And one of the directors on the board of the company, he was a very professional multinational company director, worked with very big MNC names. He was sitting on our board. And he one day called me aside after the board meeting. 
And he said, Sunil, I want to talk to you. So it was a very informal chat. And we discussed so many things about management and how to run the business and all those things. I didn't know that my informal way mentoring is started. And then later on, we started meeting, I would say every alternate month for one hour, one and a half hour, other than the board meetings and all those things. And the formal mentoring started. And this guy, he, he, he did something very, very unique to me. He told me that Sunil, you should not stop as a CFO of any organization. You are not meant to be a CFO. You are meant to be a CEO. Now, that was like a shock to me. I never imagined that I would become a CEO or a profit center head or a managing director. But this guy told me that I should work towards that. And he started helping me on that. So that's one of the fantastic experience of mentoring. I'm still in touch with him now 25 years. Yeah. The age of that person is 85 years now. And I still go and meet him once in a six months in Mumbai. He's an old man now, but I have a lot of regards and respects to him. He lives in Bombay. And that's very, very delightful. And a lot of learning lessons from you oh, as well towards how do we maintain a relationship with a mentor even after if we can say that, you know, the value addition is, is yep. work. So, so fantastic. And now I have a question which is more towards role reversal. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that, you know, you can, you can take out a long list of people what you've mentored. But, but is there anybody who, um, who occupies a very fond place in your memory uh, in your corporate journey that you've had, uh, you've had the opportunity of mentoring and how did that mentoring result into? Yeah, many, it's very interesting because there are many cases I was just trying to remember, uh, you know, and a number of cases because I always followed coaching based leadership model in my three decades of life. So I used to mentor a lot of people, but one thing which very comes to my mind is this guy used to be a internal audit manager coming from PWC type of organization to audit my organization where I was sitting as a managing director on the board. Mm -hmm. And I, his, he was a young boy or he is a young boy. His age is hardly 35 now. Today he's 35. So I used to tell him that you need to move out from this audit role and become a CEO type of person or a leadership person. And I started mentoring him. When he used to come to do the audit, I'll sit with him for one hour and I will just mentor him, you know do this, do this, have you done this, you know, do your SWOT or what's your roadmap, what's your vision and all those things. You will not imagine, Omkar, three years back, three and a half years back, this guy got a job as a CEO of an American multinational company wow. based out of Chennai. Okay. So imagine from audit manager straight to a managing director of an American multinational company having turnover of around 250 crore, having three plant locations. Wow, wow. That is... That's... And that was like... ah. Uh, you know, it was an aha moment for me. And he openly acknowledged this in front of many people in many gatherings, in webinars that I have been mentored by Sunil and that's why I'm sitting in this position. Yeah, that is that is delightful. I see that, you know, there is so much similarity between the, the advice what you got and the advice which you are dispensing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I think, the, the law of yes. confounding, right? Uh, where, yeah. where it's, um, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure if I would have met you three years ago, you would have said told me the same thing that Omkar, you know what? Don't be a professor, start becoming an, an entrepreneur or a CEO. So I'm glad that, you know, this conversation itself is an experience of, of mentoring from you. You know, um, I want to I wanna now shift you from, from a mentee, then to a mentor, to an observer, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have led so many organizations to its summit, to its, to its ultimate uh, success. Uh, could you share a few experiences from, from your corporate journey where you observed a fantastic mentor-mentee relationship bubbling within the organization? And maybe at the same time, if you could highlight certain traits of that organization that, you know, what was the culture of the company like? And uh, so that, you know, we can all get a context about how a good organization culture is for, for mentor-mentee network. Yeah, very interesting. And you use the word culture. So uh, what remembers or what reminds me is Peter Tucker used a terminology called culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. that was a very strong statement made by Peter Tucker. And I always remember that yeah. strategy is important, but culture of an organization is more important than the strategy of an organization. Yeah. And if you have a right culture, you can do miracles in an organization. Yeah. When it comes to mentoring also, you need a right type of culture in an organization to be mentored or to be maintained. You know, I, I have worked in multinational companies. I have worked in family-owned businesses for three decades, all across the world, Africa, Middle East, 
South Asia, India, and all. I have seen very few companies really utilize the mentoring program very effectively. Mentoring is not easy. What happens is typically organizations use mentoring for inducting the people in an organization. You know, when you've got a new batch of IIT and so I am MBA, they are coming. So they said, okay, you got a buddy, you got a mentor, he will mentor you for three months. I don't call that as a mentoring. That's more of a training or inducting them into an organization. A mentoring is a systematic process. You need a structure for that. You need a framework for that. And you need the deliverables and outcome predefined and agreed by the mentor and mentee. And it has to work towards the interest of an organization. And most important thing is mentoring is not a speed dating. So it's not that uh, overnight you get mentored and you become so and so. No, mentoring is a slow process. A person needs to start changing. A person needs to start respecting and accepting the mentor, mm -hmm. trusting the mentor and showing his own commitment. So that's very, very important. So very few organizations really uh, aptly are able to do that. But off late, there has been a lot of good things happening in the organization as far as a mentoring is concerned. Mm -hmm. What goes bad in a mentoring is uh, typically when you, like I said, speed dating, or if you keep a mentoring program only limited for three months or three sittings or two sittings, and there is no deliverables or outcome agreed upon in advance, then it goes like, just go and have a coffee with a senior guy and something like that. That's not mentoring. Even though informal mentoring plays a role, but there's a limit to how much informal mentoring. You know, uh, I, I really like that uh, that uh, statement what you made that, you know, mentoring is not speed dating and it cannot happen in a short period of time. You know, we are surrounded by companies which are termed as super successful and, you know, on the bottom line and the top line, they are successful, but they have a very fast culture, right? Um, you know, we, we're talking about Nikas of the world right now, Paytms of the world, like Paytm at least it's been 21 years now. But Nikas of the world or, or any top organization like Farm Easy is trying to uh, subscribe. And that's our definition of success. Now, amidst this rapid growth, amidst this rapid scaling, how does a slow, evolving, nurturing process like mentoring fit in into the, the success of companies? Because, you know, uh, traditional companies or legacy organizations have that, if I may use the word vibe, which, which supports mentoring. But over here, people are overworked. People are running crazy behind their KPIs and their targets. So how does the whole concept of, of mentoring, can it work firstly for these high-paced organizations? And if yes, then, then what do you think about it? See, I personally believe that every organization needs to have a sustainable plan. Sustainability is very important. And whenever we say a sustainability of an organization, we talk of three things, three Ps, I call it people, profit, and planet. So let's forget about profit and planet because we are discussing mentoring. So let's come to the people. Now, people or people are the most important assets in any organization. Now, mentoring is a slow process. It, you cannot expedite the mentoring process. The moment you start expediting a mentoring process, it gets into a training process and not the mentoring process. So what I'm trying to say is that Average good mentoring program, according to me, should run at least for one year. Mm -hmm. And you are creating the future leaders of the organization. See, you are not, the mentoring is not to, you know, help ask someone to how to run a lathe machine mm -hmm. or how to get the extra production from your machine, you know, yeah. or how to enhance your profitability within one month. No. Mm -hmm. Mentoring is a process. It talks about career development. It talks about so many aspects means someone may want to get a new job as a head of let's say sales and market, and he needs to understand the negotiation techniques, how to get negotiation or how to do that. So he needs to be mentored and it's a slow process. Mentoring also involves hand-holding by the mentor to the mentee for a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. So to be effective, that mentor-mentee relationship needs to be sustained at least for one year, according to me, not for three months or six months. Uh, that's definitely not a mentoring at least for one year, both the parties need to be committed to the relationship and the sponsor here, when I say sponsor means the company or the organization, which is sponsoring this mentoring process, need to have a commitment towards both the mentor and mentee. And it's not like that overnight you say that, oh, by the way, we are changing your mentor now. We are getting, getting Mr. X in place of Mr. Y and he will start mentoring you. No, it's a relationship. It's an arranged marriage. 
yeah which gets converted into a love marriage <laughs> and it should not get into the divorce yeah yeah so that's yeah. that's how it works perfect i i really like that thought you know um the compulsorily at least it should be minimum for for one year and by the way the best part is that if it is for one year you know that the employee will stay for one year right so, so that's going to reduce employee attrition at a at a large extent you know sometimes i have seen in the workplace and you know maybe one third of your experience what i have in the corporate world um i have observed that uh, you know mentoring mostly happens by chance you know it doesn't happen by design uh it's what i like to call the luxury of the extroverted that if you are extroverted enough right uh, i can walk up to say a business leader like mr deshmukh can say that sir uh, i seek mentoring this is my current state but why does it always have to happen by by chance is there any advice or framework what we can refer to where you know mentor mentee networks can be formed in a in an organizing way and you know even the introverted employees can can have benefit out of this no it's absolutely i mean so i i have been uh, working on this for a very long time because i have always believed that introverts are much more intellectual than the extroverts I means with due respect i whether you are introvert or extrovert but this is my experience of three decades but one need to identify and recognize how to identify the introverts how to bring them to the mentoring platform and how to ensure that you know they they get into the proper mentoring relationship so organization needs to have mentor mentee network organizations need to have informal group meetings and very very important in this group meetings like i tell you what i used to do when you are sitting with the 10 people let us say in a meeting general meeting you are discussing vision or you are discussing when you know that out of 10 people only five people are talking and other five people are not talking mm-hmm. as a leader it's my duty to ensure that i ask those five people who are not talking mm-hmm. oh by the way what's your idea yeah. or what do you think of that or even if out of those five who are not talking maybe three will talk but two never they will never talk so after you finish the meeting call them one on one have a informal meeting with them and start talking with them and then you identify that these guys are the smartest guys but they are introverts and we need to train them you know and the mentoring process you know there are stages in the mentoring process you cannot suddenly start mentoring an introvert yeah that's the difference between mentoring an extrovert and mentoring an introvert so you need to have it's a initiation stage you start the process then it's a development stage then you have a cultivation where the relationship really starts bringing the fruits and then obviously you have a separation stage or you have a redefinition stage where you come back again and you form a long term friendship and all this stuff so it's very very important that introverts and the people see what happens is companies identify blue eyed boys only for me yeah yeah that that's the problem they don't need mentoring blue eyed boys don't need mentoring the boys who are red eyes or black eyes or brown eyes they need the mentoring and leadership is not leadership is across the board available when we we don't just create the leads mm-hmm. now this is this is fantastic right like yeah, the blue white boys never never really need the mentoring right you have to look beyond them it's very easy to mentor a blue white boy right yeah. um we heard like you know talking about mentors and talking about a little bit of noise and as you said that leadership is available across the board right that's one part of the story but the second part of the story is that if you just do a quick look up on linkedin and type in mentor you know there will be uh, tons of tons of people uh, proclaiming uh, themselves as mentors and nothing wrong with that that's a great intention but how do you how do you identify authenticity how do you identify uh, you know how um, a mentor is really going to be helpful because there's a huge amount of power distance between the two individuals that's number 1 and then you also have to nurture the mutual respect right but if a mentor is not actually helping you or you know the mentor is more of what i like to say a namesake mentor how does one actually uh, unlearn that that whole process of of you know very gracefully uh, identifying and then suggesting that hey you know what this is this is not really working out yeah so it's it's so i always tell that identifying and finding a right mentor is a process mm mm-hmm. and you rightly said that you know you go anywhere in social media or linked whatever website nowadays you have tons of mentors saying that i am a mentor i am a mentor what i would do as a mentee assuming i want to get mentored by someone i would have one session which we call session 0 mm-hmm. session 0 is basically understanding each other which is of course not paid session so i will have a session 0 with that mentor and i'll ask him lot of questions mm-hmm. 
So that's number one. And I have to find out whether my chemistry is matching with that mentor or not. That's first step. Second step is I will ask the mentor, how many people here are mentored or mentored in past? And can I speak to some of them? See, reference check, even though it's an age-old strategy, still works. Even in mentoring, even in doctor, you go to a family doctor, he refers to a specialist, right? Yeah. That's the same thing we are doing here. So ask the mentors, how many people here are mentored? And you go and talk to those people. What is their experience or how they felt about it? Third thing is, also you have to understand whether the mentor has got really time commitment for you to give it to you. See, a lot of people use the mentoring as a badge to get whatever, recognition or whatever. But when you go and really meet them, they said, no, sorry, by the way, I don't have time. I can meet you only once in three months. So never choose a mentor who do not have time for you. Yeah. mentor mentee relationship highly, highly depends on time availability of both the people and commitment from both the side. So please go to a mentor who has got time for you. You may get best of the class mentor. You may, for example, you may go to the Marshall Goldsmith. Let's give an example. Marshall Goldsmith made a statement, what got you here, what get you here, right? So you go to Marshall Goldsmith and you said, Marshall, please mentor me. He will say, yes, but does Marshall Goldsmith have time to mentor you? So identifying all those factors is very, very important. And do not go to a namesake. Also try to see the people, what's their background. Is their background matching to your expectation level? For example, you are working in, let us say, you are working in a oil and gas industry, let's say. And you want mentoring to be done in a medical device manufacturing. So let's say it's a functional mentoring, okay? Now, a guy might be extraordinarily good in oil and gas industry, but he may not be of useful to you because he may not understand you. So you have to see a lot of pluses and minuses and then choose a mentor. Do a, a zero session with one, two or three people. Who is talking? Yeah. Uh, so, choose a you know, uh, you were speaking about when you um, thinking from a mentee's perspective, right? I yeah. just want from your perspective that, you know, what is what are the three or five main responsibilities you should you should have as a as a mentee? Whenever as you're a mentee. Trying, as a mentee. See, it's very, very important as a mentee. So the ball is in the court of mentee always, you know. Yeah. Mentee needs to get developed, not the mentor. Yeah. But of course, mentoring is a dual process. A mentor also learns from mentee. That's a different aspect. Maybe we'll talk in a separate session on that. But a mentee needs to take the ownership of the process. That's the first thing. If you are not committed, if you do not have ownership of the process, you cannot be a good mentee. Also, second most important thing is mentee needs to create his development plan, mm -hmm. which is useful to mentee to work with a mentor. Mentee also needs to have a reflective ability mm -hmm. to do his own SWOT analysis, to do his <clears throat> pluses and minuses, to talk to people. He should be critically analyze himself when he wants to get mentored. And very, very important is that a mentee should be ready to listen to the advice given by the mentor. It's very important. A lot of people with due respect today's world, you know that, uh, Omkar, they just don't listen. Listening is a biggest, biggest behavioral aspect in the world, but a mentee needs to be a good listener. And of course, I always talk to, uh, as a mentee, he must be professional. He should have commitment, he should have time, and he should work towards the activities asked by the mentor to do. And then it's a trust and respect to each other. Wow. No, this is this is very intriguing, you know, because there are so many benefits of mentors, mentee. Um, but often, you know, HR directors who are possibly responsible for this, they look at this as more of a checkbox item, right? Three months, six months. Uh, as you rightly said, that they might mistake this with uh, training and not mentoring. If it's a, if I am a futuristic organization, if I'm a progressive organization, and let's say I'm the HR director of this. What advice would you give me if I want to launch a proper mentor-mentee network at scale within the organization? Yeah, very, very interesting because I have gone through both the sides, the bad side and good side. So, but the basic thing, what I look at, I'll tell you. See, the mentoring, when you get to the mentoring or the framework or the process, what is very important for an HR department or the leadership of an organization is to think that they have to shift from ego system to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Ego means ego, ego, our psychological ego, you know, yeah. child, whatever. So you need to move from ego system to ecosystem because organization needs to continuously start creating the leaders for future. Mm -hmm. 
So mentoring is not a one-time process and mentoring, mentoring is not a tick box item that HR department says that I have trained him, I have done his induction program, I have done his mentoring. No, no, no. Mentoring is a continuous process. So for that, there has to be a commitment from the top level, not only HR department, but from the board level. That's very important. So if you want an item to be removed from a tick box and becomes a culture of an organization, it has to come from the top management, which could be CEO, CEO board of directors, managing directors, that's number one. Second thing is you need to have a proper framework of mentoring, not just that you match someone to someone and say, okay, you go to Mr. Vijay and start getting mentored. No, no, you need to have framework. Why are you doing mentoring? What is purpose of your mentoring? What are you going to get out of that mentoring program to that mentee? Or you have planned to develop someone, say five years down the line as a CEO or a CEO or whatever, for some position, you start the process now. It's very, very important. Now, other very important aspect is, See, a lot of companies do not train the mentors. Yeah. See, training a mentor is also an aspect of HR department's work. Yeah. You, yeah. you are not born as a mentor. Right? There are very few people who are born as a mentor. So if I want to be a good mentor, I also need to enhance my skills of mentoring. I need to understand so coaching or, or counseling or consulting the people or various other aspects involved. So train the mentors. Create the proper mentor pool. In your organization, you may have 20 leaders. But all of 20 leaders cannot be mentors or they may not want to become a mentor. So you have to identify four, five, six, and then keep on training them. So mentor, train the mentors, identify the mentor and mentee and matching the mentor and mentee is another aspect. Because it's like I said, it's an arranged marriage getting into love marriage, right? So how do you match the mentor-mentee relationship? There are many criteria, obviously we will not discuss everything, but there has to be a criteria in each organization. How are they going to be? And obviously, at the end of the day, yeah, there should be a monitoring process, how the mentoring is going, whether it's become an active mentoring or is it become a passive mentoring. You know, many, many mentorings, only first session happens and then after that is a one-year gap. That mentoring is not mentoring. Then it's an informal mentoring or it's a luck by chance or by chance. Mentoring. So monitoring, so create your KPIs. What are your key performance indices as far as the mentoring program is concerned? So it's a holistic process. It's not a one-time process and mentoring needs to continue lifelong in an organization, not only for one year. This, is, this has been brilliant. I think uh, I'm gonna make a small presentation out of it uh, about, because there were so many, so many uh, catchy statements backed by so much wisdom. Uh, I, I, you know, just to recap, I really like that, you know, mentoring is, is arranged marriage, which evolves into a love marriage. Mentoring is not a, three months or six months, and at least has to be for, for one year. And the responsibilities of a mentee is that, you know, that I need to be professional. I need to be punctual with my time. I need to be very explicit with my, with my requirements. So I think in the last 20, 25 minutes, I've been mentored and everybody who's listening, I'm pretty sure that, you know, they will be mentored about how to run effective mentoring uh, challenges. So thank you. Thank you once again for dedicating this time and sharing your wisdom. I'm very grateful. The entire team at Beehive is very grateful. And I'm 100% sure whoever ends up watching, listening, and reading this is going to be grateful to you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Omkar. And it was really interesting to discuss with you, Anna. All the best to Beehive and of course, all the best to you. And I'm always available for mentoring. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.